Most people will tell you that they desire to find happiness in life, but in trying to find happiness in life, they try to go out and gain the riches of this world. They grind, they hustle, they work hard for the riches of this world. But what if I told you that contentment, learning how to be content, finding contentment, that is far greater than the happiness that you believe you can find through the riches of this world. To be content means that you are at peace in your heart. And in order for you to find that peace of heart, I tell you today that you cannot find it by seeking the riches, seeking to attain the riches of this world. To find contentment, to find peace of mind, I tell you today that you must learn to turn to the Lord you must learn to trust in God. And when you do this, the peace of the Lord, it will guard your heart. That's what we see Paul say here in our Sunday school lesson this week, which is being taught there in the fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. Well, we'll see there in the fourth verse that Paul, he learned how to be content. As we see him say to the Philippians there in the fourth verse, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, Paul says there, I will say rejoice. You see, Paul, he learned how to rejoice. He learned how to rejoice because he learned how to, as we've seen in the past couple of weeks, he learned how to live with the mindset where his mind, his heart, it was focused on the Lord. It was focused on living for Christ, to live as Christ, Paul said. His heart, it was focused on living for the heavenly kingdom. And in living in that manner, it brought him a great amount of joy. And so Paul, again, there in that, that for a verse, he's able to say, always rejoice. And the reason why he's able to say that is because, again, he lived with a God first mindset. If you truly, again, to desire to be happy in your life, why not turn to the Lord who will make you content? Because again, contentment, I tell you today, that is far greater than the happiness that the world can give you. The happiness of the world, it is temporary, but contentment, peace from the Lord, that is everlasting. Now we'll see there in the sixth verse that with this mindset, Paul, he learned how to not be anxious for, for anything, which we see Paul, he encourages to the Philippians there. Paul, he said there in the sixth verse, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, Paul said, by everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. You see, this speaks about prayer. And this also speaks about trusting in your fellowship, trusting in the Lord. Prayer, as I said in a recent Bible study, it is an indicator of one's relationship, one's fellowship with the Lord. It is an indicator of if you have a healthy fellowship with God or an unhealthy fellowship with the Lord. When you are comfortable with going to God about any and everything, when you are confident in making your supplication known to God, that is making all of your requests known to the Lord, when you are confident and you know that God is going to move on your behalf, as Paul said here, why be anxious for, for anything? In my life, Yes, I, I have my worry, but at the same time, I know that God is going to deal with all things that I go through in my life. So while I may have my worry, my worry, it vanishes. It goes away almost in an instant because I have learned in my life to trust God. And in that trust, I have learned not to be so anxious. We must learn that in our life today, not to be so anxious, but to go to God in prayer, trust in our fellowship. Paul, he says there in the seven verse, he tells us that when we are in fellowship with the Lord, he tells us that the peace of the Lord, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Listen to this. Paul says that it, the peace of God, it will guard our hearts. Now there are many people today that that needs to hear this again. When you turn to the Lord, Paul said, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your heart. The reason why I say that so many people need to, to hear that and they need to be attentive to that today 
is because, again, so many people are on the grind in the hustle for the riches of this world. And they truly believe that the riches of this world is going to, to make them happy. But something that I have learned in my life is that the riches of this world, it may give you happiness. But again, the happiness is temporary. It goes away. It's, it's like eating food, right? You, you eat food and it, it may satisfy your, your stomach for a little bit, but you get hungry again. And there are many people today that are feeding their hunger with the riches of this world, but that hunger, it is unending. They aren't quite satisfied. Yet at the same time, there are many people today that are searching for the riches of this world, trying to gain the riches of this world. But it, like, like Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes, it's like grasping for the wind. It is vanity. It, it, is, it is futile. There are many people today who are in search for the riches of this world. They never get the riches of this world. And, and so many people, they live with a heart that is troubled. There are so many people that are fighting the spirit of anxiety because they are unable to gain. There are so many people that are fighting the spirit of depression because they are again unable to gain. When again, I urge and I encourage, just as Paul said here, turn to the Lord. And when you learn to turn to the Lord, when you learn to trust in him, then that anxiety, it will go away. That is to me truly the most sad thing in life is that so many people are missing out on peace of mind because they much rather continue to chase after the vanity, the riches of this world, when all they have to do to find true peace is turn to the Lord and his peace, it will guard your heart or their heart. Paul, he tells us there in the eighth verse where we'll see there in that eighth verse that Paul, he desired for, for nobody to live with such a mindset, especially those that would choose to, to live for the Lord or those that will profess to, to say that they believe in God. Paul, he states there in the eighth verse, he says, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, he said, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely. Paul goes on, he says, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, Paul, he says there, meditate on these things. Let's be clear here. Paul, he again was teaching to the Philippians and therefore all of us today as well, all of us who are of sincere faith, all of us who desire peace of mind. Paul says, why don't you take your mind off of the riches of this world? And, and why don't you focus on heaven? Why don't you focus on the Lord? Again, if there's anything of virtue, anything praiseworthy, Paul, he said, why don't you meditate on on these things. You see, again, we will learn to be satisfied in our heart when we give up the riches of this world. So many of us, we, we, we are finding ourselves in, in an unhealthy place because all we are doing is grinding and hustling, but there's no satisfaction in our soul because we are unable to attain the riches of this world. But Paul says, stop doing that to yourself. Why don't you meditate on these things? And again, when you meditate on these things, the peace of God that will satisfy your soul, that will guard your heart. Paul says there you again, you will learn to know contentment. You will learn to know peace is what he tells us there. Now we'll skip down here to the 11th verse. We're down there in the 11th verse. We'll see that that Paul, that he had reached this place of contentment in his soul by walking by faith. Again, trusting in his fellowship in the Lord there. We'll see that Paul, he said, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. There in the 12th verse, Paul, he said, I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to, again, abound and to suffer need. I tell you, what, what Paul said there in that 12th verse, it, it takes a lot of growth. 
it takes a lot of maturing in faith. Honestly, it takes a lot of going through things to, to reach this place where, where Paul, again, there in both the 11th and the 12th verse, he speaks about again how he learned how to be content in whatever state he was in and, and whatever it was that he was going through. Again, Paul saying there, he knew how to abound everywhere and in all things. He, he learned how to be both full and hungry, how to again both bound and how to, to, to suffer need there. It takes a lot of growth to, to go through, to, to get to this place. It takes going through trials and tribulation and doing as James encouraged to do, how to let faith have its perfect work. You see, take it from me, someone who went through five years of undergoing dialysis because of renal failure, where, where my kidneys, I kind of chuckle at it now, I often say my kidneys tried to take me out, um, but they failed to realize that my master, the one who is over me, the one who sets my path is the Lord. And he brought me through that trial and, and through that tribulation. He brought me through affliction. And so I learned in my life that my condition, what I was going through, it does not define my position. That was something that I preached years ago, that, that what it is that I go through in life, it doesn't determine whether or not I am blessed and highly favored in God's eyes. And, and that's the mistake that, that many people make today in that they let what it is that they attain in the world, their possessions, they let that define whether or not they are truly blessed or highly favored in God's eyes. When in actuality, God couldn't care less about the riches of this world. You see, the Lord, he cares more about the riches of his heavenly kingdom and whether or not you will live for the riches of his heavenly kingdom. That is what God is concerned about, whether you will live for heaven. God isn't concerned about you living for the world. Yes, the Lord is concerned for your life. Yes, he's concerned about your life physically in this world, but God, he's more concerned about your soul and whether your soul will rest with him for eternity or whether your soul will be set apart from him for eternity. That is what the Lord is concerned about. And so, yes, many people grind and they hustle for the riches of this world, but the Lord, he desires for you to learn how to be content with his blessings. The Lord desires that you learn how to be content and satisfied with what it is that he supplies to you. God, he supplies our every need. And again, as I said in a recent study, he will give you the desires of your heart truly if it will glorify him. That's how the Lord blesses us. And again, I tell you today that we must learn how to trust in his blessings. That's something that many of us fail to do. We don't trust in what God gives to us. In fact, many of us, we, we get upset with the Lord. We get frustrated. We grow frustrated with what it is that the Lord provides for us, to us. I always use the baked cake example where the Lord, he will bless us with the ingredients to bake a cake and many of us we will get upset and we'll, we'll get mad with God because he didn't give us the cake. When God, he gives us the tools to be able to, to make the cake. We must again learn to trust in the Lord when he supplies our every need and in that trust, again, we must learn how to be satisfied, content in everything that we are going through in life, knowing again that we have a deliverer and that God will deliver us when we least expect it. He will deliver us at his time. We must again trust in his timing. Paul, he said there in the 13th verse, in a very familiar verse here, Paul, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's such a powerful statement. Again, that is a statement of faith. That is a statement of trusting in the Lord as well. Do you trust the Lord today? Do you trust God to supply your every need? Do you know peace of mind? Have you found contentment in your life? If you haven't, I tell you today, trust the Lord. 
and God, he will supply your every need and he will make a way for you. Paulie, again, he says there in the 14th verse, speaking of him, speaking of uh, himself, saying here that he's not perfect again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week. But we'll see that he gave thanks here in the 14th verse to the Philippian believers for sharing in his distress. As we remember from our first lesson, Paul, he was going through some things as he wrote this letter to the Philippians. Paul, he was under arrest. He was in prison being watched by all of the palace guards, as we remember in our first lesson of this quarter. But what Paul again said in that first lesson that we saw in this quarter, was that he, he wasn't down. He was again in a good place. He said that, hey, what, what has happened to me, it has worked out for the furtherance of the gospel. And so Paul, in his writing here to the Philippians, what he says there in that 13th verse, he speaks of how they uplifted him in his heart as they shared in in what he was that he was going through. With them sharing in, it encouraged him to keep on pushing forward as as Paul, he speaks to there in the 15th verse, where he speaks to how the giving of the Philippians and whatever it was that they could give, it uplifted him as he remembered how they gave when he departed to Macedonia. He says there in the 16th verse, he says how the Philippians, they sent him aid for his necessities when he was in Thessalonica. Him just remembering the Philippians and in their giving hard, it, it uplifted him because they again was sharing in, in his distress in his, his time of need. He says there in the 17th verse, making it very clear here that he didn't seek such gifts, which again, it, it speaks to the goodwill of the Philippians, the giving of their heart, the love that they had. They, they were not of selfish ambition. They were true and sincere believers as they were helping their brother out in time of need. He said there in the 18th verse that he had received and abound. He was satisfied. He had no need of anything. Paul said that he was full from the, the things that the Philippians, that they had given to him, that they had sent to him. So Paul, he, he lived with complete trust in the Lord. And in his trust in the Lord, Paul, he knew that he would be delivered. And again, we saw this in our recent Sunday school lessons, one way or the other, whether it would be life from his arrest or death from his arrest, Paul, he learned how to trust in the Lord. He learned how to, again, not stress, not be so anxious about what it was that he was going through, because again, he knew that God would deliver him. At the same time, Paul, he knew that he was surrounded by such a great crowd of, of friends, right? And brothers and sisters in Christ that helped to uplift him. And from such a wonderful blessing that he had received from the Lord by being surrounded by such good friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. And again, God blessing him with, with spiritual gifts. Paul, he learned how to be content in his heart. He found peace of mind in his situation and what it was that he was going through. Again, being under arrest. And again, he sets the example for all of us as believers today. I don't know what any of you who are watching this video, any of you who are listening to the audio, I have no idea what any of you are going through, but I uplift you in my prayer. And again, I certainly hope that you do the same for, for me as well. And again, all of us, we must trust in the Lord, that the Lord is attentive to our every need. We should know that God is attentive to our every need, and we should know that the Lord is going to supply our every need. We have no need of getting out ahead of God, and that's something that many of us do as believers. We get out ahead of God. We aren't satisfied with with how the Lord is moving on our behalf. We aren't satisfied with what the Lord is giving to us. And so we believe in our hearts that we can go out and that we can do better than God. 
how has that worked out for you when you have done that? I know in the past when I tried to do that, it didn't work out well for me. And I know several other believers that will admit the same as well. So again, we must learn how to, again, trust in the Lord, trust in our fellowship with the Lord, lean on him, depend on him. And when we do this, God is going to move on our behalf. And again, he's going to satisfy our every need. And we will learn then the peace of God and how it guards our hearts. And we will learn how to be content. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.